on those two issues. Um, actually, I've already updated the rosters. Awesome. We have had two more changes, so now I have to send a revision. Okay. But other than that, we have met all the requirements for the election. Great. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this phone number that you gave was the state one name. Is that directly at the city hall? Yes, that's our valley office. Okay. Yes. Will so there be a machine answering or a live person? Either one. So they have different staffers online to answer the phone, but if someone is not there to pick up, they, they check pretty regularly. But the phone will be active 24 hours? Yes. That's only the regular hours. The other hours will be the, you leave a message. Yes. Yes. A question. Uh, regards to the upcoming election cycle, the city still has areas within boundaries that are not right, not included in any NC area of jurisdiction. Vis a vis the new stuff that just went through the city council and to, to the disclosure, I've had a discussion with Mr. Bernard Clark's office since he is the overseer of the neighborhood subcommittee for the city council. What is going to be done eventually for those people who live in an area that is not covered by any NC? who you can make an argument are being disenfranchised from engaging in, in the process just because of where they live. And so this has been a problem that's been ongoing. I, I think you and I have discussed this in the last couple of years, but as you can see, for example, the remote gardens area, Ricardo Street, uh, where Ray uh, Rios grew up, is disenfranchised. Ricardo Street, Ray, for example, is still living on Ricardo Street, because of his residency, he's not eligible to vote in a neighborhood council election or run for a neighborhood council based on residency. And so there are zones, and I want to make you know, but I was hoping Council would use our address this when he took the position forward. But is there something that can be done in the next couple next few months to give these people an opportunity to say, hey, look, if you're this little what's called orphan zone, I think that's a term that they use a lot. If those people can have a choice to say they can go south, for example, Boyle High, or Lincoln High, or El Serino, and make a choice surrounding their, directly surrounding their neighborhood so that they are not disenfranchised for the process just based upon the residents. That's a, uh, so, actually, just really quickly, because I know you guys have a, a loaded agenda. There's two things that can happen. And
environments. And there's stakeholders in that area that really want to organize and really want to be part of this neighborhood council. And so you come to a common agreement that we, you know, we're, we're going to take a vote, we're going to let you in, and you know, we'll definitely expand our boundaries. Um, yes, this board can say, well, we're currently 17, now we're going to add three more seats for that area, or however many more seats. Just know, however, that those two changes do require you to go through an additional review process through the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. I should point out after that question, uh, uh, some of the reasons that were given why the neighborhood council didn't want those gray areas was because since they added more people to their geographical area they didn't have, they have to share the 37,000 with more people. Yes. They wouldn't get an additional percentage for those people. And that's, it wasn't because they weren't good enough for any of that kind of stuff. It's just that the money is just so limited to give out there. And if you have more people, then you're not really serving your immediate people. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. You don't get more money. I want right here and then this. So when saying that, the zip code in Ramona Gardens is what? So can we change our name back to El Sereno? You can change your name to wherever you want.
as this is a, a stakeholder's initiative peti petition, it is mandatory that we place it on the agenda, but I would be willing to accept this motion on my behalf as well. Anybody second? Second. You're, you're, more, you're more informed than I am, so that's why I left it open for you guys to, to determine exactly. I would say Parks and Rec, I would say the City Council, the Mayor's Office, the State Representatives, all five of them. Okay, so basically the same people we... Yeah, but you guys know more than me, so... But specifically directed to the Mayor's Office? Rex and Parks, Mayor's Office, City Council, and the State Representatives. And I know we've done several letters to Parks and Rec in regards to the bathroom, so I do have all that information. I would ask uh, my colleagues to support this motion, and after if this does pass, that it would turn to resolution, and Connie would either appoint someone or assign someone the task to prepare the, the documentation. This is good that we're notifying all the political offices of whatever level of government that they are, because a lot of times they're totally unaware of these issues in their district, and they would like to help. Uh, if they knew about it, so I'm glad that uh, Mr. Pacheco brought it up as to who should be notified. And so we're covering all our bases, uh, and gladly that we're not omitting anyone. Uh, number one, I think it, it would have served the motion, uh, maybe in one fell swoop, have the letter already constructed, and then we could pass it on to the Corresponding secretary to doctor or whatever change it. That way, if the motion passes, the letter would have gone out right away. Because if that letter comes through, we have to vote on that letter again, or are we just going to say? Well, we do actually have a draft letter because this issue was brought up to the executive committee. Right. Is there any ideas? Six foot, is that going to be high enough? Eight feet? Um, what's high enough? That's number two. Um, third, regardless of what happens with this, we should still have some proactive outreach to the coaches and to the parents and the kids that are playing there. Maybe put some signs up on the inside. Hey, kids, don't jump over the fence. The ball goes over there. Tell one of the coaches. Tell one of the, the parent um, advisors. 
to handle it. Please stay in the park, that kind of thing. I think would go a long way as well. So those three things. The letter, I guess, is a good hand. Fight the defense and uh, also do some outreach with the coaches and the parent uh, advisors that are out there monitoring the kids' play. Yes. The height and everything? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes. In terms of the height that uh, Mickey brought up, I think it's a standard and a no-brainer. It's probably not going to be any higher than any of the public schools in their playgrounds and uh, football fields or around buildings. It's a certain height of height, and that's pretty standardized no matter where you go. So if we're going to put one, that's where it should be, probably all around the park. Not just on Easter, but on the side street where the pool is, and the other side street where the parking lot is. The whole park should be fenced in. So, you know, the thing is, you say there's a draft